Hey guys, so this is John. I'm playing Galbraith in the five minute pool on ICC. Let's open with e4. It's been a while since we've done that. So uh, let's play a Spanish bishop b5. All right. Sorry to do this to you if you're expecting a, a real clash out of the e4 openings. A tactical clash, that is. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide this into a little calmer waters and play the exchange Royal Lopez. You guys know I like this line, so please forgive me. Okay, let's take with the knight. And I don't know, black has moved their queen around a couple times. I know this move is acceptable, queen to f6. But we'll see what happens. All right, so here I can play bishop h4 and then maybe angle for bishop g3. I kind of like the look of that. Let's do it. Black's behind in development, no question about it. I've already got my knight, bishop, and I've castled. So already I've got a couple pieces in play and my king is safe. Their light score bishop may have a hard time finding a good spot, because if they play bishop d7, there's bishop g3, and c7 is loose. Maybe they could play bishop d7, bishop g3, queen b4, and try to go after b2. That would be possible. Bishop g3 now? Nah, I think they're going to play queen d8 if I do that, so let's just, let's just continue developing. We'll play knight out to c3. This does give them the option of c5, but I feel like if c5, knight b3, queen takes d1, let's say rook a takes d1, knight d5 will be a threat, and maybe I can capitalize on that lead in development once again. And I'm very intrigued about the possibility of bishop to g3. I like that quite a bit. So my issue here is that it's hard for me to activate my queen without losing this knight. And I really think on bishop g3, they're just going to play queen d8 and then try to complete their development. So I might need something a little more forceful. Queen d3 is possible, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. Hmm. f4. I could try it, but it doesn't seem right for some reason. Hmm. Queen d2, there's going to be c5 in reply. Huh. Knight f5. Knight f5 would double up my own pawns. Don't know how I feel about that. Okay, let's play bishop g3. I think this move is all right, at least. And maybe we'll go knight f5 after that. It remains to be seen, but this could be okay. Yeah, let's try it, because I'm thinking if a queen trade occurs, like c7 is going to be weak. So maybe I can get away with this. I'll pre-move this capture. Perhaps there's some similarities to the Berlin defense, some comparisons that are possible. Black has the bishop pair plus a damaged structure, but we're offering to go into a queen's off position. Yeah, definitely after they play g6, there's some comparisons to that opening. I should probably trade queens now. Check. Try to get their king to move. Takes with the knight. Okay, so c7 is loose, but I can't take it because my knight is hanging. Knight d4 or knight e3? Let's go knight e3. Maybe a better post, because I have a feeling they're going to play bishop d6, or knight e6. Yeah, that's possible too. Uh, and then they're going to continue with bishop c5. I see their plan. Okay. How can I disrupt that? Knight g4 is too easily defended. Knight g4 isn't giving us anything. Hmm. f4, bishop c5. Okay, I'm going to play f3, and then after bishop c5, just drop my bishop back to f2. I think with that knight on e6, I'm not making any headway on this diagonal, so let's just do this. See what we can come up with. So you're going to let me do this move, huh? Guess I'll do it, if you insist. I'm not sure why they played bishop back to d6. Okay, let's come here now. Hmm. Yeah, let's just centralize. I think they're going to castle queenside now. They still have that option, but they didn't take it. All right. A3. Maybe A3 followed by knight A5. Try to attack this weak pawn. Hmm. 
Mm. Knight a5, they're just going to play b6. Maybe that's nothing. Knight d4, also nothing. Bishop g3. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot going on here. I'm just going to stake out some space on the king side. Go g4. I mean, in the long run, I'd like to make use of this pawn majority, right? So I think this makes sense. My issue is a familiar one. Uh, I'm down on time. <laughs> Although we're well used to that situation. I'm going to excuse myself slightly since I'm playing e4, but I would prefer not to be down a full minute on the clock. Maybe we'll get some time back. Hmm. Let's just go here. Is he going to take on h3? Because that would be kind of cool. He's going to do this. All right. So what's the point? Because f3 is guarded. I don't see him crashing through on that square. Now let's go over here and oppose him down the h file. Bishop e6. Forgot that that was possible, but I can come here and attack that pawn. He can bring this rook in, but I'm thinking knight d4 then? Maybe? Okay, well, let's take the opportunity to stop rook d2 while we still can. Rook d2 would have been interesting, just letting me take b7 if I want, but the knight on e2 was under attack, so I couldn't do it anyways. Hmm. E5. Eh, maybe just knight back. Let's just play the knight back for now. Just go here. Let's move this over. I think he's well aware of what's going on in the, with the clocks. So, expect him to continue pushing on the clock. Maybe now I can get my knight to d5. That's progress. That'll be nasty for him, because I'm attacking the bishop and also f6 and c7. Although, bishop c8, knight d5, rook, c, rook d7 might hold everything. Yeah, I don't see a clear way forward after that. But at least I have a chance to play a move, a defensive move, if necessary. Hmm. Knight b3, maybe? Check. Okay, let's take and go knight here. You can play c4. I'm giving up control of f4 in doing this. Hmm. Don't really like how I'm playing this right now. But we'll see. See if he keeps pushing c4. c4, knight a5, maybe? Now I'm going to switch back to the queen side. I'm going to let the king side just marinate for a little bit. We're going to switch back to the king, to the that side of the board later, maybe. Okay, let's take and then bring this over. And knight c6 might have been possible too, but this looks pretty good as well. Um. Okay, let's do this. Trying to defend that c2 pawn. Go attack his rook. Now I get king d4 next move, so maybe this is leading to something. Something or other. Um, let's go here and defend c2. Time is going to catch up with both of us, though, soon. Hopefully him before me, though. Uh, let's go knight d... No, let's not play knight d5. That was a really dumb move on my part. I don't know why I played that. <laughs> Check. Is he going to come in? Check. Yep. Check. Check. 
Ooh, we hung his rook. Check. All right, well, looks like I'm going to win this one. <laughs> Perhaps undeservedly so, but... A win's a win in ICC land, guys. Check. 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 All right, we get the victory. Yeah, that was a shaky exchange Roy Lopez. I feel like I could have punished Black a little better out of the opening. But maybe their position is acceptable all along. This method of developing looks really funky, like queen f6, queen d6. Later they have to play queen back to d8. But black posi Black's position remains somewhat impenetrable. I mean, you saw I had a real hard time creating threats with my minor pieces. Let's go back and have a look at it. I like the exchange Spanish for Blitz for its simplicity. There's a few players who use this as a main weapon, uh, even in longer time control games, like uh, Grandmaster Eduardus Rosenthalis, Lithuanian Grandmaster. He like exclusively plays Bishop takes c6 here, never Bishop a4. So after castles on move 5, black has a lot of moves that are possible, and even some funky ones like queen f6, as you saw. So I just remembered this being like a, a critical line, so I didn't know much more than bishop g5. So I took it with the knight. Yeah, taking it with the queen is also possible. Theoretically speaking, white should encourage trades in these positions because this helps to uh, reach an eventual position where the superior pawn structure will matter. So white has just a structural edge here, no question about it. Black has doubled c-pawns and white does not. And I've said this before, and many of you who play the Spanish and who play like the Berlin Wall, for instance, will know that if you take off all the pieces except just the kings and the pawns for both sides, white wins that pawn ending because of those doubled c-pawns. That extra c-pawn is discounted for black. So, I mean, in a vacuum, exchanges should be good for white, but it's not like trading the queens is necessarily the best move because trades are good. Like, it's not that simple. Um, in fact, I was thinking if I kept the queens on the board, like maybe black's queen would be a target, which kind of came up after f6. I tried to bring the bishop back to g3. Here the engine says just bishop e3 is better. Yeah, maybe the bishop is just uh, on a superior square, superior diagonal when it's sitting on e3. Because bishop h4 to g3, yes, I do take the c7 pawn in my sights, but if I can't like win c7, I wonder what it's doing on the king side. In some respects, it just blocks my king side pawn majority. So I could see why the engine would prefer bishop e3 there, but it's, it's kind of early to say for sure. And then black chose this unusual development with knight h6 to f7. That's a pretty good square for the knight though, and it doesn't block the bishop as knight from g8 to e7 would do. So queen d8, I played knight f5. Okay, this looks good. Check. Took this way, yeah, and this was probably wrong, knight e3. Kind of a silly move now that I think about it. I should have just played knight d4. Yeah, that way, I mean, if bishop c5, at least I can bring a rook over, and c7 is still a threat. Maybe I'm not technically threatening to win it yet. Well, maybe. I was seeing some possibilities of, like, take, take, and if I were to take on c7, then there's knight e6, but um, I don't know if black can arrange that. Bishop g4 is the best move, attacking the rook, maybe trying to induce f3 so that knight e6 can pin. But if I play rook d2, white retains a small edge. Yeah, I think it's possible to say that knight d4 is just better than knight e3. The knight on e3 doesn't have good prospects. I was thinking like maybe this would be useful, but I never really got at b7 too effectively. Yeah, knight e6 and black is fine, according to the computer. Not sure why they played bishop d6. That, that move baffled me. So all this happened. I think black played pretty reasonably, though, for the most part. Here they should castle instead of playing rook d8. I don't know if there's many benefits to keeping their king on e8. The biggest benefit to castling for them is that they connect their rooks. So I think rook d8 is a small inaccuracy, maybe. So here the engine was saying e5, trying to swap a pair of pawns. And what if they play f5, keeping the position closed? Then b3... Yeah, but you see the eval, it's pretty much dead level. 
So black strategy has been a success out of the opening if they've equalized. This might be overreaching, g4. I was struggling to figure out what to do in uh, the center and on the queen side, so I figured let's just go to our bread and butter in these positions, which is the king side majority, the four versus the three, because usually to win such positions, you do have to activate that majority. And in some cases, even just create a pass pawn in the long run. So that's what I was trying to do with g4, just set my pawns in motion. But h5 did present a few tactical issues. Like one thing I was wondering, after the game continuation, so the knight coming over here to attack those two pawns, I was wondering if black could do this. That might be kind of crazy. Check. Yeah, okay, this is just Check. nonsense according to the computer, but it looked a little scary. I was worried about black's light square bishop. Okay, so that, that didn't amount to anything, but I still feel like g4 might be overreaching a bit. The engine wants to play c5, maybe enabling bishop b5, trying to skewer the knights. Good idea. So knight g5, king g2. We got a trade and then king f7. Ooh, so I blundered something here. Why did the eval suddenly just go up way in black's favor? It might be because of the game continuation. Rook takes h1, rook takes h1, bishop e6. I'm not trying not to look at the eval right now or the moves that it's saying after this, but I think it probably is. Unless there's some tactical issue, but... I don't see a tactic black has necessarily. So I bet it doesn't like what's coming up. Rook takes h1, rook takes h1, bishop e6. Yeah, that attacks my knight, which is the only thing guarding against a rook intrusion now to d2. So I move my knight away. And he, he cooperatively played bishop c8, but had he played rook d2, I would have been in trouble, I think. Attacking the knight plus the pawn. I probably would have played this move, knight d4, at least that was the move I was considering, but I bet like bishop c5 or something. Yeah, and now he's threatening to take the knight. He's still threatening b the c2 pawn uh, after the knight is eliminated. And if I move the c pawn like here, rook takes b2 as possible, which simultaneously defends b7. So that was the right moment for black to strike. Bishop c8, I think, is too much of a reflexive move. I attack a pawn, he defends the pawn. Maybe he just didn't think about rook d2 and counterattacking, which would have been very strong. Black is well positioned to do that with my rook on the king side and my coordination of my minor pieces being so poor. So now I get bishop e3 and then I breathe the sigh of relief. Even though I was still down on time, this move is nice to defend the d2 square. I still think black is completely fine here. Yeah, in fact, they're still they're better according to the engine. I thought he was going to play c4. Go ahead and do that one, which looks pretty good. Because if black can activate their majority with the amount of pieces that are on board, it's it's totally possible black will be just better. I mean, because those bishops once they get coordinated in the pawns and black still controls the d file, I'm a long way from proving that my structural advantage is of any concern to black here. So bishop e6, on the other hand, eventually allowed me to attack it with knight f4. Check. And even still, black's doing well. Knight g5 was a good defensive move. So I should have played e5 according to the engine. Hmm. So if they take, I take Check. king f7. Knight e4 is strong. And Check. take, take. I guess the main idea is that my rook can try to come into h7, which black cannot prevent. Yeah. So I can go on the counterattack. And if like bishop takes g4, I assume check. check, and I'll probably win g6 as well. And c7 is hanging too. Hmm. Check. So taking the knight wasn't as good as e5. Check. Yeah, and the rest of this was very much marred by time pressure. They might have pushed a little too much on the queen side. I think this, like pushing the B and C pawns, while black has rid themselves of the doubled C pawns, I think A6 and C3 just turned out to be weaknesses. So I really don't like the way they played that. I mean, <laughs> but again, I, di I didn't prove it in a convincing way. Uh, like king here, probably not so good. Probably checking with the rook on B7 would have been better. 
Here, apparently, I'm in big trouble if black found knight d4, because it's bye-bye c-pawn. <laughs> Instead, they play knight c5, and then I get to go here. Knight b3 is also good. I'm trying to offer a trade and then win this c-pawn and win the rook end game. And now this is very good for me, knight b2. I found a good move here. So they're trying to swap knights with me. And I played knight e3, which I think is excellent because it defends c2, and I'm also threatening the take here. But I couldn't figure out quite what to do after this. Like I won the pawn. And yes, I'm up a pawn, but I need to find a Check. better way to play this than what I did in the game with my 20 seconds remaining. Check. So this is fine. f4 is actually the best move somehow. Honestly, when I played f4, I just blundered it. <laughs> I don't know. This is just a time pressure move. I guess the reason why the engine will like f4 is that it does distract the rook. Okay, here but not king takes c3. Better to play rook a3 and try to win this with the rook. Yeah, because black's knight is off sides. Like, they have some question marks surrounding whether they'll be able to get that knight out. You can see it doesn't have any safe squares to go to at the moment. So instead I took with the king. He went here. Rook takes e4 would have been much better. So he went here instead, and I played this. Check. Check. Okay, white's better now by a slim margin, Check. but none of this really mattered. Check. It was just a race against time. Yeah, and big blunder by black to lose Check. the game. Okay, so kind of a shaky game as far as my technique goes. Um, this is an interesting line. I mean, I think if you play the Royal Lopez for either white or black, like you have to have a, a good understanding of the ramifications of the structure, like the doubled C pawns. And I sometimes like playing fundamental lines like this. Like I've said this before, but the thing that appeals to me about the Spanish is just like, or the Spanish exchange rather, is just how much sense like bishop takes c6 makes. Like after a6, in my opinion, the theoretical move bishop a4 makes a lot less sense than just bishop takes c6. Like imagine if you were to explain to a beginner why after bishop b5, attacking the knight and indirectly pressuring e5, like why you would want to play bishop a4 voluntarily when they give you a, a golden opportunity to exchange your light square bishop for the knight. Uh, nowadays, like, and once you learn some Spanish theory, like you say like, okay, yeah, I see why bishop a4 is good in the long run. It leads to a lot of main lines and white can press for an edge. But I mean, if you were just explaining in basic terms what white should do after a6, like, I think most everyone would be like, yeah, take the knight and double the pawns. Why not? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? So I still have kind of a soft spot for this line for white. And it's a good line to practice your, your end games as well in strategic play. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.